This week, an exhibit about Whitney Houston opens at the Grammy Museum, and her final movie, Sparkle, comes out in theaters. And there's also a book on the shelves now called The Whitney I Knew, and it's written by our longtime friend, B.B. Winans, whom you saw deliver touching remarks and song during her funeral. And he's been kind enough to join us today to talk a little bit more about the Whitney that he knew. Yes. Um, why did you want to write the book? And I wonder how her family felt about that. You know, her family was very supportive. Wouldn't have done it if I didn't have the support. And it was important to me on two levels. To put in the 97% that the tabloids forgot to print <laughs> most of her life. And, and also it was very therapeutic for me in order yeah. to embrace the pain of such an incredible loss. I, I, I bet. And I'm so sorry for her what you went through, what her family went through, um, and, and having to say goodbye way too, way too early. Um, I adore the human stories that you shared in this book, because you're right, we get to see the beautiful singer and the right. actress, but right. you kind of saw someone who you considered your sister. Oh. Tell me about your relationship. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, I remember there's so many memories and so many moments, but one of the things that just sticks in my head, one day we were at the apartment, Whitney would just show up. And, you know, at that point I had a one-bedroom apartment and me and my wife, and you know, we go give her the bedroom. She said, no, I want to sleep on the couch. I, we woke up that next morning and I was sleeping out, slipping out the door and I looked over and the sunlight hit her and she rose up and her hair is going this way, hair is going that way. Hair. And I, <laughs> I looked at her up and I said, boy, if people could see you now, they would not want to dance with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And she just laughed. She was full of laughter, you yeah. know. We learned to laugh, and she learned through the difficult times that laughter could bring her through it, you know. Tell me some of the, the great stories that are in the book, so this will entice some of our viewers to, well, to get the book. One, one, one of the things... Crazy ones. <laughs> The she crazy Whitney. There's a chapter I think called Crazy Whitney. She was she was she was crazy. <laughs> she was crazy, and that's the the part I miss so much. But one of the things that she loved to do, and people don't know because you see her jet set all around and being driven in limousines, she loved to drive. She was a horrible driver because she never could drive. So there was a time we were in in Atlanta, we were driving around, and she almost you oh, know and traffic crashed. in Atlanta. And it was like, Ooh. honey pull over and I made her pull over she was so angry because she wanted to drive and but she couldn't you know and there was just a lot of things about her that just caused me to laugh she would call me and sing her hellos you know and it's you know she was just a simple girl and that's what I talk about in the book she was a simple girl with an enormous gift you know yeah. that she had to catch up with okay so her movie's Sparkle, it's going to open. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to one of my favorite stories in the book, which was that she would go to the movies and you couldn't stand to go with her. <laughs> <laughs> but she would go. <laughs> she was a talker. During the movie. She was a talker during the movie. And one of the things that I thought was just unbelievable, her, she was talking to Cece and I was at Whitney, and she said, no, I'm not going to, but she was talking about this movie. And this one lady turned around and just to the top of her lungs said, shut up. Shut up, you're talking too much. She didn't know it was Whitney. Right. Because you know, no. we snuck in yeah. before the, you know, after the movie started. And long story short, she reached up and said something to the woman. I was just praying. I said, oh, God, please, please don't let the <laughs> Jersey girl come out. No lawsuits, you know. Please. And, and yeah. long story short, she stepped back. The girl turned around again and hollered. And Whitney leaped up and grabbed her ponytail <laughs> and shoved it and said, don't be so rude. And then I'm saying, and her boyfriend stand up. And, and so... Robin, her assistant, said, BB, take her out. We run to the car. My heart is pounding. Right. And when we get in the car, Whitney turns around and says, that was fun. <laughs> fun? <laughs> I'm about to have a heart attack. Right. Fun? No, 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 no. I'll never go again. To, but that that's who she was, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I miss that spark, that spontaneous. You also said that um, you don't think people should blame Bobby Brown for right. um, for for her her end right um, why because I, I you know there, there's he was a wonderful and he is a wonderful man he really is a wonderful guy I felt that they weren't made for each other as husband and wife and I told her and it's all in the book what I said to her at the end of the day Whitney made her own decisions and so it's it's unfair I think to blame any decision that she made on Bobby or anyone else because as much as 
I miss her and I love her. You know, we all make mistakes and we all make decisions, and especially when you're grown, you know. And so she made some decisions. I stuck with her and walked her through some of those. But at the same time, no one's to blame but Whitney. Yeah. Um, Sparkle opens. Mm. Are you going to go see it? Have you seen it? I said no. That I, I didn't want to go to the premiere. But I'm going. I'm going because I, you know, just like the funeral, I know I'll cry. Of course. And I didn't want to be in front of people when I, you know, but I'm going in support of, of, of the family. And, and I'll laugh, I, I'm sure, when I get over the initial shock when she shows up on screen. Yeah. Difficult. When, when was the last time that you saw her before her death? Before I, before she died, she called me two weeks before. And... I saved the message, and, and all she said was, this is your sister. I love you so much. I just called to tell you I love you so much. Not knowing that that would be the last time you I still hear have from message. her. I still have that message. I'm sorry that for the pain that you're going through of that separation, but how did the book help you? It was the most, I think, um, important thing I did to, to, to write this book, and... I'm on the other side now. I'm laughing more than crying. I'm smiling more than frowning. And what, what has happened through this, I think with any loss, is that you accept the reality of life. And this is it, you know. But at the same time, what happens is those 28 years that we created, we create moments. And so those moments now have come to the forefront by writing this. And now I can live with memory of Whitney, you know, and through that, I'm getting through. What about um, Bobby Christina? H have oh, you talked with her doing, recently? Yes, she's doing wonderful. She's, okay. She really is doing wonderful. She reminds me of Whitney so I much, bet. you know. She's, she's fiery. She knows where she's going. And then she has the support, you know. At the same time, there's good days and there's bad days. She's had a dramatic loss, you know. And so we all give her time. We all give her space. But she knows we're there. And she's going she's gonna to get through. 